Okay, before I start today's Retro Arch and Sharp X68000 setup guide for a Windows PC, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it really helps out my channel too, which I'm always really appreciative of. So we're looking at Sharp X68000 today for Retro Arch. So it's actually not that difficult to set up. So obviously, Sharp games are going to come with multiple discs, but I'm going to cover that as well. And we're also going to look at setting up BIOS files in which core you need to download in RetroArch. So let's start with opening up RetroArch. I'm using Portable just here. And let me just remind you, if you're new to RetroArch, I've done a complete beginner setup guide at a slow pace. So let's just open up RetroArch for now. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is just turn this into full screen. So from here, I'm going to go to video, full screen mode, and I'm going to press my A button on my Xbox controller to start in full screen mode. Here we go, that's a little bit better. So on my Xbox controller, I'm going to press B to come out of here and B again. If I then use my D-pad, I'm going to go up to main menu, and from here, just press right on my D-pad and go down to Online Updater. I'm going to press A on Core Downloader. And just here, this is all the cores. Now, if you are new to RetroWatch, cores are essentially tiny little emulators that run exclusively with RetroWatch. So here's the core we're going to download. This is Sharp X68000 PX68K. If I press A on this, that's now been installed. If I press B to come out and B again, I'm going to just go down to configuration file and press A on save current configuration. If I press B to come out and down to quit, press A. Okay, so the next thing we're going to need to do is go into the system folder, which you can find in your RetroArch folder. And in this folder, I'm going to create a new folder. So right click new folder. And I need to name this folder that I've just created, Kropi. So that's a new folder created. And what I'm going to do is just go inside of that folder. And this is where our BIOS files are going to go. So I've got my BIOS files here. And there's five in total. So you can pause the screen just here so you can see the files that we need. What I'm going to do is just drag and drop those inside of that Kropi folder, just like that. Next thing I'm going to do is look at games. So I've got a games folder here and my games are in different folders. So we'll start with Final Fight. We got Final Fight Disc A and Final Fight Disc B. Both of these are in .hdm file extension, which works really well. Uh, other file extensions we can use with this are .dim, .img, .da8, .88d. Uh, .dup. So there's various different file extensions, but I find .hdms work just fine. So what I'm going to do within my RetroArch folder, I'm going to just create a new folder in here. So new folder, and I'm going to just call this folder ROMs. And this is where I'm going to store my games. So I'm going to drag my games folder inside of that ROMs folder and just rename this. So right click on the folder, show more options, rename. And I'm going to call this Sharp because in a minute I'm going to scan for my Sharp games within RetroArch and add it. So what I'm going to do next then is open up RetroArch again. Okay, so from main menu, I'm still pressing my D-pad. I'm going to just scroll down to import content. And if I press right on my D-pad, I'm going to go down to manual scan and press A. Content directory, I'm going to press A on this. And my games are on my C drive. If I press up on my D-pad, that's going to bring us to the bottom. I'm going to go into Users, my System folder, which is Jamie, and I'm going to go to Desktop because that's where my games are. That's where my RetroArch folder is. And I'm going to look for my RetroArch folder just here and down to my ROMs folder that I just put inside. And I'm going to go into the Short folder and scan this directory. If I press up on my D-pad, press A on Start Scan, press B to come out, and right at the bottom here, we can see Sharp has now appeared. Okay, so we've got the BIOS files in place in the Kropi folder. We've just scanned our Sharp games. So if I start by opening Final Fight, Disc A, press A on this, 
I'm going to go down to set core association and make sure PX68K is selected there. If I then go up to run. Okay, so now the game's running, I'm going to press space on my keyboard and that's just going to fast forward. Okay, as you can see that's working really well now from time to time when you're booting up sharp games you'll see a lot of japanese text a lot of the times and sometimes it's trial and error so in some cases we're going to need to swap discs over so to do this if you press f1 on your keyboard this is going to bring up retroarch's quick menu from here if you just scroll down the disc control loads new disc and as we know final fight has disc a and disc b it's literally just a case of selecting the next disc that is asking for and then from there you simply just press on insert disc and that should then load up part two or part three etc of the game itself <laughs> Now, not all Sharp X68000 games require multiple discs. So, for example, if I just close out of this game, so from Quick Menu, Close Content, if I go down to my Sharp playlist and open up R-Type, always set Core Association, otherwise you'll always get asked this. So, obviously for Sharp, we only have one core for this. And then go to Run. And on Spacebar, you can actually fast forward. Hey, let's take a look at some video settings so if I press F1 on my keyboard what I'm gonna do is just come out by pressing my B button if I then go to main menu down to online update or if I scroll downwards I'm gonna find update overlays and whilst I'm here I'm gonna update slang shaders as well 
Okay, while this is extracted, if I press my B button to come out, and I'm going to head up to Quick Menu this time, what I'm going to do is press my D-pad downwards, which is going to bring us to the bottom. What I'm going to do is go up to On-Screen Overlay and press A to enable this. If I then go down to Overlay Preset, I'm going to go into Borders, and just here we got a selection of different borders. Now, randomly, we got things like SNES Castlevania here. If you check out my full comprehensive beginner's guide for RetroArch, it shows you in there how to download even more of these, so specifically for systems such as Sharp. If I go to my CTR folder, Borders, I've got more just here, but really if you want the true experience of having Sharp Borders, then do check out that video guide. And what that's going to do is take away the black borders on the left and right hand sides and replace it with something a lot more fancy. So if I come out of here, and again, this time I'm going to go down to shaders and press A on video shaders. Load preset, press A. Shader slang, press A. And just here, I've got lots of different shaders. For example, if I go to bezel, mega bezel, presets. Now we're going to find MBZ or MBZs just here. Make a note that the ones with zero are going to be very demanding on your computer and if you go to say number five then it's going to be a little less painful on your cpu and gpu if i just add one of these or rather select one so i'm going to go for mbz advanced no reflect press a now it will appear that your computer is frozen what it's actually doing is applying these shaders okay so once that's been applied if i press b and go in the quick menu or resume And what I'm going to do is just apply an overlay. Not that we have a sharp overlay, but I'm going to just show you how this works. So if I go back to on-screen overlay and overlay preset, I'm going to pick something random. I'm going to go into my borders folder. And yes, this is going to be for Game Boy, but I'm going to just show you how this works. So if I select GB.CFG, come back out and back into the game. So as you can see, it looks ridiculous with Game Boy just there, but just to prove the point and how that works. So Sharp has different models and different RAM sizes. So some games are going to ask for more RAM. Some are going to ask for different setups altogether. So really, it's just a case of identifying the requirements per game. Go into your quick menu, core options. And from here, if you go into the system, We'll find here things like CPU speed, so some games will run better with faster CPU speeds. We also got RAM size, so from my experience, 2 megabyte works fine. However, I have found particular games require us around 12 megabytes of work at full speed or whatever, so those options are there should you need them. And we also got audio just here, so if we go to MIDI output type, we'll have different types of MIDI output just here. Now, in order to save things such as your shaders, so you can boot up RetroWatch with the same shaders applied, all you need to do in Quick Menu, just go to Overrides. And if we go down to Save Core Overrides, this means when I open up another game, it should have the shader applied. So let's test this out. If I go to Quick Menu, Close. And I'm going to go and select Sawfees. Set Core Association, PX68K, and run. And here we go, it's now saved everything. Now, most, if not all games, are gonna run in four by three aspect ratio. We can actually change this to go to 16 by nine or full screen. What we can do here is go back into quick menu, settings and video, scaling, aspect ratio. If I put this to full and go back into the game,
Now, of course, because we got that decoration or bezel in place, the Game Boy situation, what we're going to do is go down to on-screen overlay and turn this one off. Quick menu, resume. <laughs> And because we've actually got that mega bezel in place, if we just remove that one as well, so that's going to be under shaders. And I'm going to turn video shaders off. And that's it for today's RetroArch in Sharp X68000 setup guide. Now, if that seems overly complicated for you, I actually uploaded a standalone emulator version a little while back, and literally everything is pre-configured for you, ready to go. But I'll leave the link in my description for that video. But if you really want to play Sharp games the easy way, then that will be the easiest way, quite literally. Anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. Also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.